Hello, good morning, fellow Roadrunners and guests. My name is Shane Brink, and in five weeks, I'm going to be attempting to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. Now, what would you need to carry? What would you need to bring along with you for gear to hike 2,650 miles? Well, today I'm going to show you what I'll be bringing on the Pacific Crest Trail. Let's get started. Wow, look at all that stuff. That's a lot of gear. But this is everything that I'll need to sleep, to cook, to entertain myself, to take pictures from the desert to the mountains. This is everything that I'll need to hike 2,650 miles minus food and water. Let's get right into my big three, my backpack, tent, and sleeping bag. My backpack is the Z-Pax Arc Hall 62 liter backpack. This pack has nice pockets on the side for water bottles. You can strap stuff along the sides of the pack. There's also a water bottle holder a phone and accessory holder, and also a hip belt pocket for electronics and snacks, because I think I'm gonna be hungry out there. This has a large mesh pocket on the back, which is really handy. You can stuff a lot of stuff in there. 62 liters, everything's gonna fit in this pack. This is my Z-Pax Duplexel. It's the same as the Duplex tent, only the XL is a bit longer for taller people. I'll be using some tent stakes, 10 of them. I've got six MSR Groundhog and four minis for the tent. Now this tent does not require a ground cloth, but sometimes I think I might want one in a place where there are sharp rocks. And I also could use this for a sit pad, and for just laying down on to take a nap. This is a sole emergency blanket. My sleeping bag is an Enlightened Equipment Enigma 20 degree quilt. Sleeping pad is a Thermarest NeoAir x Light for comfortable sleeping. The sleeping pad and sleeping bag will fit in this Dyneema stuff sack. Next, I wanna show you my gear for cooking and hydration. I'm gonna be using this 900 milliliter titanium pot and lid. To cook, I'm gonna use this BRS 3000 stove. This thing is less than an ounce, along with a four ounce fuel canister. I will have a tiny piece of Scotch-Brite pad to clean out the inside of that titanium pot. A mini Bic lighter to light the stove. I'll be using this Tokes long handle titanium spoon. Sometimes I may not feel like cooking, so I can just hydrate dehydrated food in this 16 ounce Talenti jar. These things are durable. Lid's super secure, they're nice and light. Now for water storage, I will be using two of these Seanock two liter water bladders. These guys are lightweight, they're easy to fill, they're easy to clean out, and best of all, they screw right onto this Sawyer Squeeze water filter so that you can filter water into another water bladder or into a smart water bottle like this. I'll have two of these and that will be all I have for my water kit. Now lastly, for the food, you have to be careful out there. Try to keep the food away from all the critters. So to help with that, I'm gonna use this lock, lock sack odor proof bag to put food in. That food and anything else that has any scent 
like toothpaste, insect repellent, any of that can attract animals. I'm gonna put that inside of this Dyneema bear bagging kit. That comes along with this rock sack. You can put a rock inside this sack, secure it, attach a line to it, throw it over a branch. Then you attach that line to the carabiner on this bag and pull it up in the air to keep it away from animals. Here are the toiletries and first aid items that go in my ditty bag. You have sunscreen and insect repellent. You have a repair kit, which has a small knife. It has repair patches for the tent and jackets. It has some super glue, a little sewing kit, and some waterproof matches and fire starter. My dental bag has a little cut off bamboo toothbrush, floss, and toothpaste. And then we have a few meds here, some ibuprofen, neosporin, some tape that's des leuco tape designed for blister care a little towel, a mosquito head net, and very important here is the poop kit. There's some toilet paper, some hand sanitizer, and a little spade for digging a hole in case you need to go number two. Let's talk about electronics. To power the electronics I'm gonna use, I'll be using this anchor 20,000 milliamp external battery. This will charge my phone about five times. I also have this wall charger for the external battery. And I need a variety of cables. This is a USB to lightning to enable me to charge the phone. This is a USB-C to USB-C I can charge the external battery with the wall charger. I also charge my camera with this cable. Then I have a USB to micro USB. I'm gonna need this to charge my headlamp. The headlamp I'll be using is a Nightcore NU17. It's simple, it has great light, it also has a red light, so you're not disturbing other people. Simple, waterproof, very light. The camera I'll be using on this trip is an Insta360 ONE X2. This is a 360 camera. It's hard to explain all the things you can do with this. They're a lot of fun. To better use the camera, I'll have this Insta360 selfie stick tripod. It's the same retracts, extends, it's simple, tough. This lets you do a lot with that camera. I need an extra battery for the camera. They run about 80 minutes on one battery. This is one other accessory I have for that camera. It's so much fun. You can screw the camera right on top of here on these threads, and then you can pull this out, and you can literally swing the camera around your head and get a great effect. A couple of ounces, it's well worth bringing along. Finally, I have my trusty Sony earbuds. These things, they can be really frustrating because they're constantly tangled up, but I don't have to charge them. They're tough. I've run these through the washer and dryer twice and they still work. All the electronics I have that need to be protected can fit in these two Ziploc bags. Some of my clothing out on trail, like my shirt and my shorts, my tennis shoes. I'm gonna be wearing these all the time, no matter what. But there is some clothing that I'll carry. Starting with one extra pair of Ex Officio 
underwear. Those are antimicrobial, so hopefully they won't stink too bad. One extra pair of darn tough merino wool socks. Then I have this lightweight mid-layer. This is a 32 degree for colder weather and also to sleep in. Same idea with this 150 weight smart wool bottoms. These are for colder weather and to sleep in. I'm really excited about this Kuyu Fleece Peloton 97 top. This thing is super lightweight, 5.9 ounces. It's great in the morning when it's cold, but it's really breathable and it dries out fast. I'm really not a big fan of camouflage, but I find myself wearing this thing all the time. I'm also really liking this Patagonia Houdini wind jacket. This thing also, I, it's three and a half ounces. And when the wind comes up and makes it cool, you put this thing on and it just makes all the difference. And so this is becoming a favorite of mine really fast. Something that you can be sure you're gonna find out on the Pacific Crest Trail, whether you're in the desert or in the mountains, is a lot of sun exposure. These lightweight glacier gloves are gonna keep the back of my hands from burning in the sun. Cold feet when you're sleeping outside. These synthetic booties, they take care of that problem. No more cold feet and you're just overall warmer. Now all of these clothes fit in this Dyneema roll top dry bag. It's great, you just roll the cop top a couple of times, everything is dry, but this bag has an added bonus. You turn it inside out, put the clothing that you're not using inside, and this becomes a pillow. Now my warm jacket is an Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex jacket. This is less than nine ounces, synthetic jacket. I tested this out in Minnesota in minus 30 degrees. And with layering, this still kept me nice and warm. This is how my outfit will look on sunny days. Sun hat, got the glacier gloves. This is a Columbia Omni Shade fishing shirt. It's lightweight, it dries out really quick. Some good old running shorts. When there's less sun, I can lose that sunshade and roll up the sleeves. Traditionally, hiking was done with hiking boots, but now most people, including myself, will be wearing trail runners with lightweight gaiters to keep the sand and rocks out of our shoes. Okay, guys. Everything that you saw out on the floor went back into this backpack really easily. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room to put food in there. And how much does my backpack, tent, sleeping bag, and everything that I need for the Pacific Crest Trail weigh before food and water? It's 15.15 pounds. My hike starts in five weeks. Now I have time to change out some of my gear. I might find something lighter, better, or more efficient, but I'm confident that if I left tomorrow, I have everything I need to hike the Pacific Crest Trail.